Hey guys, it's Mark, KSHP Radio, with What's Eating Vegas. Today we're at the corner of Sahara and Fort Apache at Bubba Cool's Burritos. New to Las Vegas, and we are excited to try the food and check it out and find out more about what they have to offer. All right, hey, it's Mark from KSHP Radio. What's Eating Las Vegas has arrived at Bubba Cool's Burritos. We got the owner, Jimmy. Jimmy, Las Vegas is a wonderful city. Tell us a little bit about Bubba Cool's and how it got originated here in Las Vegas, or brought to Las Vegas. Well, uh, Bubba Cool's is a franchise that originated in Port Moser, New Jersey. Um, the owner and the vibe of uh, Bubba Cool's is, uh, it's, it's well on the West Coast, California, Las Vegas. It's got that real family-oriented uh, <clears throat> ordeal. It's real smooth, I mean, why when you come in here, you know, you know it's just, it just feels good. I mean, uh, you, know, you know, the culture in New Jersey, you know, especially because Point Pleasant is a beach community, it suits, you know, it suits well, you know, what we're trying to implement out here. I mean, uh, as you see, you take a look at our food, we're very diverse, our menu's there. I mean, uh, a lot of the food is fresh, and uh, people out here in Las Vegas know how to eat here, and they, and they, and they intend to eat here. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, who me? There are there is some competition in Las Vegas, uh, especially with other restaurants that are here to do something similar. What separates Bubba Cools from some of you guys' competitors? Well, I mean, uh, no, number one, our food consistency is spot on. The consumer is our number one priority. I mean, you know, we go above and beyond, you know, you know, for many aspects to, to, to just to make sure that you know, you know, the consumer is 100% satisfied, you know, from all aspects of, of how we operate. I mean, we're a family-oriented place. I mean, uh, we're engaged in the community. I mean, if you see what we do from the Reading to Eating program, to, to even myself on how I implement myself with youth, kids, sports, trying to get kids off the streets, you know, you know, you know going to interventions, you know, to troubled neighborhoods where kids are involved with gangs and, and just really just putting that extra effort in. Because if you ask me, I mean, most people in Las Vegas is great, but I'll tell you one thing in New Jersey, we're all about service. Yeah. That's just, you know, New York, New Jersey area, it's, Somebody's always nipping at your ankles. So if your service ain't above and beyond, we'll be taking a back seat most of the um, And Bubba Cools is now here in Las Vegas. Do you, or another franchise, do you guys have plans to expand Bubba Cools in Las Vegas? Absolutely. I mean, uh, right now you see with the virus thing is a little bit challenging. I mean, uh, so, so just to jump and, and, and integrate ourselves more into the community here is a little bit challenging because you just don't know what comes next. But, I mean, uh, me myself, I, I you know I had plans to turn around and put as many of these uh, franchises in the area as I could. Um, hopefully, what, you know what's going on in the world right now will end like, shortly. I mean, uh, I have a crystal ball and turn around and tell you, yeah, you know. But I mean, uh, we're going to be a dominant force. We're a national brand. We got 109 stores coming up probably within the next, I want to say, year or two, depending on, like I said, what goes on with the virus, but. I mean, on the East Coast, we're making a lot of noise. You know, we have uh, two stores coming in LA very shortly. Um, you know, we have you know we have, we have a store in Lancaster, California, and we got stores in Louisville, Nashville, and you know, you know things are coming. Again, we're talking with Jimmy, the owner here at Bubba Cool's Burritos. Uh, they just landed in Las Vegas. We are excited to have them be a part of the Las Vegas family, especially now here on What's Eating Vegas. We'll have more from Jimmy as we continue this segment. Uh, all right, Mark and I are about to try the shredded chicken here, so we'll see uh, what we got going on here. I gotta say, I'm an avid fan of uh, some other restaurants very similar, like <laughs> Cafe Rio, so my expectations are pretty high. Uh, good taste to it. I think, uh, I think it's a peppery taste that actually differentiates itself. Yeah. When you look at places like Cafe Rio and Chipotle, because that's naturally that's what it's going to be compared to. Mm -hmm. I like this has a more defined flavor in and of itself versus I got to add everything to my salad or my burrito to make it stand out. Yeah, this already has that flavor, that taste to it. And they look like they have some kind of seasoning in there. It really brings out the meat. The seasoning really brings out the meat. Well, the first case. Can't wait to see some more.
right, here we go. Bubba Cool's chicken burrito, fully loaded. We're gonna give it a taste test. Very good, very good. Chicken burrito with everything. Everything that I got on it goes together well. This is similar to the burritos that I usually get. Same toppings. The chicken has a very good spice to it. I got the grilled chicken and all the mixtures of what I have is definitely appealing to my taste buds. It's a, it's a great burrito. You have to try it if you come to Bubba Cooters. Original season. Oh, okay. I think it was secret sauce because it is secret. Perfect. I like it. Can you describe it, maybe? What's that? Can you describe like what the you know what it, it does for the trip, basically? To make it shaky? Does it make it? Yes. Yeah, so you get a real savoring, uh, real, real savoring taste. You're gonna get a glimpse of that for a minute. We're making this video right now. <laughs> so this is for me. This video. Very well. That's why we don't throw any seasoning on the steak. The marinade, you know, it, it pre-marinated. It sits for 24 hours. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna actually uh <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something I find very unique about what you're doing is you're proportionalizing it. Uh, you know, versus uh, other food places that may uh, kind of cook a bunch at a time. So, is that just something personal to you when it comes to cooking? Well, I'll tell you what, when we portionalize it, it comes out fresh. So, what we do, do when, when they mass produce it, how do you know how long it takes it? How do you know you're getting any, you know, the food consistency is not the same, you're not getting a quality product. Each, each and every one of these portionalized things that are cooked here, whether it's steak or shrimp, it's being cooked fresh. Yeah. It's not something that's sitting. So when you cook something in numbers, the question is at the end of the day, is the operator playing with the food? Is he pouring water on it? What is he doing? The food is not going to be, it's not going to taste, uh, it's not going to taste the way it needs if it's been sitting there for 45 minutes. So I mean, uh, the direct approach to this, I mean, it's more sensible to, to the consumer. And, 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 you know, they're getting uh, live food. See here, it's going to be even individually all cut up, what's been fast is coming off the grill. Uh, when I had taste tested stuff like the chicken and the beef, there was actually a seasoning on it. I think I'd mentioned that before, and that it doesn't. It actually has its own standalone flavor. And when you go to places like Chipotle and Cafe Rio, it's actually not exactly that way. And not to say that they do anything wrong, but again, we're talking about a business that takes it to the extra step. And this guy Jimmy, who cares so much about his business, man. If you want to go support somewhere in Vegas, local, this is the number one place to go. salad uh, hopefully that part didn't get cut out but if it did I just wanted to say um, the, the immediate thing I noticed was all the vegetables before I get too far into the meat were actually very fresh uh, hopefully again it didn't cut out but I, I did work at Domino's for three years we had jalapenos come in obviously they're very popular nothing against Domino's or anything like that you notice you know some batches weren't consistent with the other ones these feel fresh these feel exciting the olives in, uh, in particular as well I can only speak about those two toppings because I worked with them for three years they just taste different. They just taste like they just got in here. And you guys obviously saw the meat. I just filmed my, you know, I just filmed cook, they getting cooked individually in a small portion. It wasn't like they were cooking the whole thing on the grill. 
think one of the great things about this salad is that when you put so much in it at the very least, and all the flavors in and of itself are so powerful, what you'll end up doing is each bite will have, some of it will just be jalapeno and shrimp, and that's great. Some of it will be guac and steak, and a bit of the salad, and a bit of the lettuce actually. So every single bite feels a little exciting, it feels a little different, and I don't know. I didn't imagine something like this even existed, especially on the affordable scale that it is here. This is not something, I've been to expensive restaurants, uh, you know, Mexican restaurants in the city of Las Vegas, and they have been amazing as well, but you're talking about like a $70 mark versus something completely different at this location. So for the value for the money, it's gonna be around the same as the Cafe Rio, as a Chipotle, but you're getting so much more value out of your dollar, in my opinion. Oh, all right, guys, that was the full experience. You saw Mark eat the burrito, you saw me eat the salad. Um, this is a unique place, man. This guy was sitting across from me. He cares more than anybody I've ever seen in my life. And I'm gonna beckon back to this once again. When you got places like Chipotle and Cafe Real, like those are college kids or high school kids. It's nothing against them, it's just they can't possibly put as much passion as he can into his food. I mean, even when he had new customers come in, even while I was here, I just observed them. He had new customers come in personal right to them and ask them everything they could possibly need to know before they went to order. It's just, where else can you get that in Vegas? On top of that, you're getting such unique food. So like, why are you so passionate about this at the end of the day? People made a choice to come here. Yeah, I remember, I'm a consumer, you're a consumer. Before I was the owner and a franchisee, you know, it's a choice. You get in your car, or you pick up that phone. You want to order, that's your doing. So it's up to, it, it's, I'm obligated as well as my staff to try to create that experience that creates something different. You know, that's what separates us from competitors or other franchi you know, franchises, period. You know, it's just that delivery, it's the consistency, it's making the, you know, you know, the customer or the consumer, shall I say, feel welcome and let them know that they're making the right choice or, 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 or relevantly the right choice. Think about it. You know, what am I saying wrong? You're a consumer. You're choosing to come here. So now, if I don't meet your standards or, or I don't try to overachieve, do I really deserve to be uh, in existence? Yeah, and, and that's a really bold thing because we were talking right before the video and we were talking about how competitive this town is technically. I mean, Cafe Rio and Chipotle are staples here. Like, they're everywhere. And you just find yourself right next to one of them. I don't know if I'll be able to say in the video, but you planted yourself next to them because you want the competition because you know your food is better at the end of the day. Well, sure. I'll tell you what I found is uh, Paul Otero and uh, Bill Hart. The way, you know, the, the way they introduced the culture to me as well as to other franchisees and how to articulate the brand is spot on. You know, you know, you want that neighborhood feeling. Yeah, we are a franchise. But that neighborhood feel, knowing the people that come in and being able to relate to them on a personal level, I mean, it, it, it really convinces, you know, you know, the people who come in here that they're making the right choice. And, 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 and me as the provider, you know, I'd rather be in an environment like that. You know that I'm catering to my people in my area. I mean, I gotta live in this community. So it's only right that you give back. Because what you build up is, is, is what you build up. If you don't build anything, then, then you know, I mean, uh, then you're stuck with what you're stuck with. Yeah, and, and that's just my final thoughts. Like, even though this is technically a chain guy, like, if this isn't the only store in existence, it feels like the location in Las Vegas. It feels very much like, I came here and I I got a taco salad that was for me. I don't even know how that's possible, but Jimmy right here found a way to do it. So, Jimmy, thank you so much for inviting us in. We have the time for our lives in here. Your, your service is above and beyond. Something even unique to Vegas. Or you're just gonna get that guy who cares about you, and it's just a meal. Somehow the guy is that passionate just to give you a meal. And it's it's kind of fun. So it's not just me. It's our brand. Like I said, the co-founders. This is our brand. This is this, this is what they want. You know, this is the criteria. And I, you know, I hold all of these real 100. You know, what am I saying? You know, what am I saying wrong here about what I'm trying to articulate? How I'm gonna push? You know, most operators, and you know, you know, you know, or, or, or even owners, they don't feel that way. That's New Jersey, that's Papa Cruz, the passionate people. We, you know, we believe in representing our brand appropriately, not just you know, uh, in front of this camera, but uh, you know, from the full spectrum. So, you know, for all to see. And, uh, you know what? I mean, uh, I, you know, as we grow, you know, larger and larger, you know, you know, in the city of Las Vegas, a lot more people are going to you know, see and hear the noise that we're about to make. And like I said, it's all going to be in an appropriate manner. Absolutely, guys. Well, that was Papa Cruz uh, Burrito. Definitely check it out. If you guys ever want to meet me here, just go ahead and message me guys. Come to the I will meet you guys down here personally. I will enjoy a nice meal out here. So thanks so much for listening guys and we'll see you next time.